Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths channel and I'm now answering question number three from the Statistics S1 International A-Level January 2022 um, Edexcel exam. And this question here is about stem and leaf diagram, um, which shows the number of deliveries made by Pat each day for 24 days. Maybe it's postman Pat. Anyway, the key here is the stem is basically the hundreds and the tens and the leaf is the units so 10 in the stem and 8 in the leaf means 108 so this is the tens the tens and the hundreds and these are the units okay so that's how this is set up this stem and leaf diagram there's 24 entries altogether it says a b and c are positive integers where a and is less than b which is less than c so c is the biggest out of the three so they're not the same values, they're different values, and C is the biggest in order. It says an outlier is defined as any value greater than 1.5 times the interquartile range above the upper quartile. Okay, so an outlier is any value which is greater than 1.5 times the interquartile range above the upper quartile. Given that there's only one outlier for these data, show that C equals 9. So the first thing we've got to do, therefore, is find the interquartile range. So the interquartile range, as we know, the interquartile range, as we know, is equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Okay, let me just sort that out. Okay, so the interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So let's find what the lower quartile is. So first of all, we've got to find its position. So the lower quartile is found by taking the number of entries and dividing by two. That tells you where it is. Divided by four, sorry. A quarter times the number of entries, which is 24 over four, which gives you six. Now, that means we're looking for the sixth and the seventh entry. Okay, when you divide by four and you get a, or you divide by four and you get a, a whole number, then you take that number and the next number as the positions of the lower quartile all right so we're looking for the sixth and the seventh number so you have two four okay that's six and all right both of them are 116 it's one two three four five six okay so the sixth and the seventh you can see that's two four six and seven both of them are sixes so 116 okay this means 116 so we can say that q1 which is the lower quartile is equal to 116 the low quartile is given the symbol Q1 and the upper quartile Q3 and the median Q2, which you don't really need in this in this case. Okay, and the upper quartile, the upper quartile is found by doing three times n over four, which is going to be basically three quarters of twenty-four, which is three times six eighteen. So we're looking for the eighteenth and the nineteenth entry. So when it comes as a whole number. You take that num that entry and the one after it. Okay, if it came out as a decimal, you'd round up to the next number. So these are different ways of actually finding the quarti <coughs> quartiles and the median. But this is um, like probably the simplest way, less confusing way. That's why I use this particular method. Just divide by four. Okay, to find the lower quartile, whole number it comes out as. Take that number, the next one, as the two two places where you find the lower quartile. When it's um, if it comes out as a decimal, you round up to the next number. That place will be where you find the, the quartile. So in this case, we have 18. So we're looking for the 18th and 19th term. So there's 24 terms. So that gives me 21 up to here. Okay, and that will be um, that will be tw and that will be 20, 19, 18, 17. So these 17 and 18 terms are both 125. So Q3 is 125. Okay, and we want to find, okay, um, the outlier. All right, so it says, so show that C equals 9. So basically, given that there's only one outlier for these data, show that C equals 9. So uh, what we can do is we can find the limits for the outliers. Now, for the, it looks like we're, we're going to be looking at the upper limit because they're asking us to find C. Okay, so the upper limit is going to be the upper quartile, which is Q3 plus 1.5 
times the interquartile range. Okay, so that's going to be Q3, which is 125, plus 1 1.5 times the interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, which is 125 minus 116. Let's see what that gives us. So 125 plus 1 1.5 times 125 minus 16, minus 116, sorry. Okay, and that gives us 138.5. 138.5 is the upper limit for the outliers. So we can see that um, the only value that C can be is 9 because it can't, you know, the only number that's bigger than 138.5 and that can be in this row is 139. That means C must be equal to 9. Okay, therefore, the, the, um, the, 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 you can say the highest, the highest value is 139, therefore C is equal to 9. That's the value of C. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. Okay, it's the outlier, and we can see that that must be the only outlier. Um, we can also check to make sure that the lower, the lower limit, let's look at the lower limit, okay, to make sure that there's no outlier on that side, which is going to be quite obvious. The lower limit will be Q1 minus 1.5 times interquartile range. Okay, so it's it's 1.5 times interquartile range less than the lower quartile. So Q1 is 116 minus 1.5 times 125 minus 116. And let's see what that gives us. I think our values should all be within the outlines for that. 1.5 times 125 minus 116. Okay, that gives us the lowest value of 102.5. That's the lower limit, and I think everything is above that. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's the only outlier, which is um, 139. So that means C must equal 9. C is 9. That's what you have to show. Okay, so there's your answer to part A. Now we're going to go on to part B. Um, Part B says the number of deliveries made by PAT each day is represented by D. The data in the stem and leaf diagram are coded using X equals D minus 125. Okay, and the following summary statistics are obtained. Okay, so we have the sum of the X values. The sum of all the values here is ne negative, ne uh, negative 96. And the sum of the, the difference between each value and the mean squared is 1306 okay now we want to find the mean number of deliveries so x bar which is the coded mean is going to be negative 96 divided by the number of entries which is 24 there's 24 days if you remember from the part a this is going to give me the coded mean x bar is equal to negative 96 over 24 whoops negative 96 over 24 that gives you minus 4 that's the coded mean now the the mean is affected by the coding okay the mean is affected by coding if you take a, if you take some values for example 1 2 3 and 4 okay and you add something to each value okay the mean is going to change the mean is going to change it's going to increase by 1 so if the coding is such that you um, you know you're using subtraction okay that will of course affect the mean so if i want to find what d is i've got to undo the coding that means x bar is going to be d bar minus 25 the mean of d is going to therefore equal the mean of x plus 125 so i've got to take this value and i've got to add 125 to it so minus 4 plus 125 so the actual mean is 121 that's the actual mean that's the mean number of deliveries 121 this is the coded number of deliveries we have to undo the code uh, the coding um, affects the uh, mean all right so we have to do with that so when you add or subtract in the code it affects the mean however the standard deviation is not affected by the code so if i find the standard deviation from this data okay now the reason being it does not affect the standard deviation is to do with the the spread of the data if i added one to each of these values i get two three four five the spread of the data doesn't change 
It's only when I multiply and divide it, it will change the spread of the data. If I doubled every value, then the spread of the data will change. So as a standard deviation is um, giving us an indication of how spread out the data is, adding or subtracting in the code, as they done here, okay, doesn't affect the standard deviation. So when I find the standard deviation of the data as we have it, that will be the um, standard deviation of the coded data as well. If the code included some multiplication, then I'd have to undo the multiplication part. But in this case, there's no multiplication. So now, we normally use standard deviation as the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Now, we don't have that formula, but what we should realize is this is actually the original formula that it came from. Okay, the standard deviation is the square root of the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Okay, now this, is an, this equation here is where the, this equation actually originates from. And this is basically an indication of um, the variance. Okay, if this tells us the distance, the sum of the squares of the distance from each of, each of the entries from the mean. Okay, and if I want to find the variance, the variance is going to be this same value x minus x bar all squared divided by the number of entries that's the variance that's actually the variance so to find the standard deviation for x i'm going to take this value which is given to us which is 1306 divided by 24 and then the square root of that is a standard deviation so therefore this is going to be the square root of the square root of 1,306 over 24, which gives us 7.3767. 7 uh, we can leave it like that. So, and we can we can say that the coding. We can say the standard deviation, okay, is unaffected by this coding is unaffected by this code okay this code because it's just adding it's just subtracting therefore the standard deviation for d is equal to 7.383 sf okay so there's the answer to part c that's the standard deviation of the number of deliveries okay unaffected by the code so when you find the standard deviation from the coded data it's the same as the standard deviation of the original data you don't need to undo the code for additional subtraction with standard deviation and you do for mean okay that's part c now we're going to go on to part d okay it says one of the 24 days is selected at random the random variable d represents the number of deliveries made by pat on this day the random variable x is equal to d minus 25. Find the probability that d is greater than 118, given that x is less than 0. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rewrite this x is less than 0 to make it more understandable in terms of d. Now, I know that x is d minus 125, so I'll rewrite the x as d minus 125, because x is equal to d minus, 20, mi minus 125, and I'll make d the subject of this inequality, that's D is less than 125. So basically what we have is the probability that D is greater than 118 given that D is less than 125. This is conditional probability. Okay, and um, if you remember from conditional probability, for example, the probability of A given B, we are limiting the sample space to B. So this is basically the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B. So what we have to find here is the probability of the intersection between D is greater than 118 with D is less than 125. That's what we're finding. Divided by, and we have to limit the sample space, that the probability that D is less than 125. Okay, so now let's have a look at this. The probability, let's find the probability that D is, less, is greater than 118 and less than 125. So 118 starts from here. Greater than 118 is from there. That's all of these up to there. Less than 125. Okay, that's these five units. So we can say that the prob this, this is going to be 5 out of the total, which is 24. So there's five entries which are more than 118 and less than 125. These five over here. 
Okay, divided by the probability that D is less than 125. So it's going to be basically this and all the numbers before it. So there's these five. Okay, and then you're going to have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that there's 14 numbers. Our sample space is only these numbers up to here. So there's 14 numbers altogether out of 24. Okay, where the probability that D is less than 25, is, that's the probability of the sample space. So this should give us our answer. So this is going to be 5 over 25. Um, divided by 14 over, so 5 over 24 divided by 14 over 24, which is 5 over 24 multiplied by 14, by 24 over 14, sorry. You flip the fraction, the 24 cancels out, and you're left with 5 over 14 as your answer. Okay, so there's the answer to part D, and that completes this question here. This is conditional probability, which we should understand. So the sample space has been limited just to these values over here that's our sample space and from that sample space we have um, five out of um, you know five out of those numbers here so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen uh, sorry that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we could have actually got this answer almost immediately. This is by using the formula, okay? Five over 24 divided by 14 over 24. Um, we could have also done it by just looking at, you know, the sample space and how many numbers in that sample space, okay, are um, satisfying this condition of being between 118 and less than 125. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 14. We could have got it almost immediately just by doing that. Okay, so both of them give us an answer. So that concludes this question, which is all about, um, I guess it's a mixture between probability and uh, random variables and um, also um, the beginning of the question, seven leaf diagrams, coding, um, interquartile range, a lot of different things in this question. So you'll find other questions from this paper in this link over here. Other questions from stem and leaf diagrams, I'll put in this um, you know, averages and interquartile range and things I'll put in this link over here. Other questions um, that you would like to see from, say, um, random variables, I'll put in this link over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.